Welcome back everybody. This episode we're going to be building a guessing game in TK Enter. Pretty much it's going to pick a random number and you have to guess what it is. I know it's really fun. It's probably a game I would play over Call of Duty. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to need a few things. So not only are we going to use TK Enter, but we're also going to use a random number. So you can import random or if there's a specific piece of random that you want to use, you can say from random import rand int, which is what I'm gonna do. So the first steps here is first change this stupid title because hello world's too cliche. So we need to give this a custom name. We're just gonna go with guessing game. Even more creative, I know. We can get rid of this print at the end. And all right, so this is the basis just to get it started. But the, the next step is to get a random integer and get a function to check if a guess is the correct guess. So let's build that, see what that would look like. All right, so first thing is we need a range from pretty much the lowest number it can be up to the highest number. So you could just say low is zero, high is 20. So you could get this from the terminal if you wanted the application to be dynamic. You could say, hey, what difficulty do you want? choose the lowest and highest number or whatever you wanted to do. Then what we can do is we can get a rand int, pass in the first number, low, and then high, inclusive. So that's gonna give us a number zero to 20. And we will just print this to confirm everything is Gucci. All right, run this, we get five. Next time we run this, we get 20. So you guys can see how this works. So we get a number, and that number is going to be the same for the entire execution, but the next time you, you play the game, it's going to be a new number. Next up, we're going to create a function to check if a guess is correct. So that's going to look something like this. We're going to say def, give it some name, such as check, and this is going to take an integer guess, and here we can just case against the random number. So we'll assign this to a variable that we can use, such as rand, and inside of this function, we just say, if guess is less than rand, then we are going to do something, which I'm gonna get back to what we're gonna do if that's the case, because we're actually going to update the user interface inside of this indent here. But for now, we're just gonna say pass. So then we'll say L if guess is greater than rand. In that situation, what are we gonna do? <laughs> we're gonna pass. Otherwise, you hit that perfect number, so we'll just say else and pass. So don't worry about implementing these quite yet because I'm gonna be showing you guys, oh, I don't wanna comment this, just pass like that. And I'm gonna be showing you guys how to update the user interface inside of this function. So have you ever developed in JavaScript? Well, in JavaScript, there is this obnoxious alert box that you know, when you're on a spammy website, it's like, oh wow, you just won because you're the 200 millionth visitor. And then it pops up and it says, do you want to download this virus? And the only option is like, okay. Well, you can do something similar in Python. Well, why would you want to do that? Well, it's a good way to pretty much showcase different things that is going on in the application. And it doesn't always have to be obnoxious. Sometimes an alert box is good for certain things so so it's actually called a message box inside a tk enter so you just say tk enter dot message box dot show info and then inside of parentheses we can put some data here which would just be a string so here's what we'll do we'll just say and we can actually do some string formatting here so put an f on the outside and then curly braces and you could say guess is correct or you could do some concatenation if you wanted. I'm also gonna put some at the beginning, so you win. So we're gonna do something similar for the if and elif, and then later on I'm gonna show you a better way to do this where we can add to the user interface. But for now, we're just gonna paste this in here and say too low, and then for this one we'll say too high. So that way it gives us some guidance on which direction to go. So the next thing we need to do is we need to put a place for the person to enter a number and then a button for them to check to see if the number is correct. So here is the code to do that. I'm just gonna clear that off just to clean up a little bit. So we're gonna say entry, 
and to create a new entry, which is where you type things in, you say tkinter dot entry, like so. And inside of the parentheses, this is where that tk variable we created earlier comes in, which is, think of it as like a reference to the window. So we're saying, hey, we want to add this to the window. And then there's one extra step you gotta do. And that is to say entry dot pack to pretty much tell it how you want it to show up. So pack is an option and there's some other options as well. So let's run this bad boy, see what happens. All right, so it looks like we got an input. Now we need to create a button. So let's talk about how to create buttons. So we'll say button tkinter dot button. And this is also gonna say tk. And now we also want to say what the button is gonna say. So to do that, we say text equals, and we can just say guess. Now there is another argument, which is what do we want to happen when we click the button? And that is called command. So we say command, and all right, just follow the syntax here. We can say lambda colon. Then we invoke this check function. So we say check with parentheses here, and then we pass in whatever comes from the entry. To do that, we say entry dot get, and we're gonna convert that to an integer. So put it in parentheses and put an integer on the left of it. All right, so that is some funky syntax, and we're not even gonna get into lambdas or anything, but essentially this is how you would invoke a function while passing an argument to it inside of TK enter. Last thing, we just have to say button dot pack, which will just add it right after the entry. And then main loop is at the bottom here. Let's run this. All right, so we got an input and then we have this button guess. All right, we should probably put something in here. So we'll put five. I think I broke it here. Let's try again, run. We'll just put five in there, hit guess. Oh, get is a method, so we need to put parentheses there. <laughs> so if we didn't have enough parentheses, now we have four closing parentheses on the right here. So let's close out of this, try it again. Run it, pass in a number five, hit guess, message box. All right, so another thing, message box is not automatically imported. So up here we can say from tkinter import message box. All right, I promise you guys that's all the mistakes I got here. So let's run this again and we'll put in a number five, hit guess, and it says alert. The title here is too high. <laughs> so the, the value we're putting in here is showing up as the title, not the actual contents of the message box. So to change the contents of the message box, we can pass in another argument. So for example, put in a comma here, and then another string so in this situation, you win will show up at the top and then it'll say the guess below it. So I am going to print that random number just so I don't have to guess 20 times. So we'll close out of this, try it again. All right, you can see the value is 17. So what happens if I put a 17 in here and hit guess? And it says 17 is correct. Very, very cool. If we put something too low such as 10, it still says too low here, and we could fix this, but I'm actually going to do a different way of displaying this. I wanted to pretty much say our previous guesses in a list here. I think it would also be cool if it told us what to put in this box, because right now it's not really clear. So we could say something like guess a number between zero and 20. So that's what I'm gonna try to do next. To create a prompt or a label so they know what to put in, we can just say label and create a new label by saying TK enter dot label. This is gonna take two things. So the very first thing is the TK object we created earlier, and then a text parameter. We could do a format string to make this easier for us, and then say guess a number low to high, and just to be clear, we can say inclusive, so that way they know zero or 20 is included in this case. And then lastly, we just say label dot pack, so that should make the label show up. Run this, and now it's telling us what to do. Awesome, and you see the zero and 20 appear dynamically, we're not hard coding those values. Then I pretty much just wanna do the same thing, create a new label for too low or too high. So what we would do is just say tkinter.label, pass in tk here, and the text 
is going to be format string guess is too low. And then we could just call pack on this directly and we don't even need to assign this to a variable because we're not going to need to keep that reference. So we're gonna take this, we're gonna copy it, paste it here, because we're gonna do a very similar thing, but now we're just going to say too high. So let's run this and try it out. We'll say five, hit guess, and it says five is too low. Say 15, hit guess, 15 is too high. Then we get it right in the middle, which is perfect, because that is the answer, 10. Hit guess, and it says 10 is correct. So that was a lot. I apologize if it was scatterbrained, but it, it takes a lot of brain power to kind of iterate through all of this stuff here. So hopefully all of this makes sense, except maybe this part here, because we didn't even talk about it. But pretty much by default, you would pass in a function name, not invoking it. If you prefix it with Lambda, it allows you to pass in an argument. And you can look up more information on that if you just research how to pass arguments to command for button inside of tkinter. Next up, we're gonna talk about a new component that you can use in the user interface called a list box, which is great for displaying data coming from a database. And that's our ultimate goal here. So stay tuned, I'll see you then.